Welcome to Haxby Shed. This video is about this tapping head and this, possibly the world's most over-engineered bracket. The video was getting a bit long, so I made it into two parts, but I tried to make each part interesting in its own right. So I hope you enjoy them. The bit of steel that I ordered to make the boss for the quill which will go there, has arrived. I paid eight quid for this, delivered. You can see it's got white paint on it. It was ordered as EN24T. When I look on my chart, white paint means EN16T. But it doesn't matter to me, anything would have done. So, I've got to machine out that centre now to 74 millimetres. And I don't really like the idea of wasting all this. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and cut it around like that and I'll show you how. This may not work, it's an experiment, let's see. A few months ago when I was making a new ratchet gear for the shaper I made up a rig where I could mount the spindexer onto this cross slide. Right, I'll clamp that down. Did I say already this might not work? Okay. I've put in a 5C collet adapter to ER32. I've put in a 16mm collet. I'm going to mount that arbor shaft in there. I'm going to drill a 16mm hole through this. I'm going to mount that on there. And then I'll be able to rotate it like this. I'm going to put another ER32 collet holder here and put an end mill in it and then hopefully I can cut a circle in this like that. Never tried it before, could be a waste of time <laughs> and all those things but I'm going to try it anyway. When I got this lathe I didn't have outside jaws for this chuck and I spent a long time trying to work out what jaws I needed to get searching on eBay for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. Right, I'll centre drill this out and then drill it to 16. Now I'm going to drill a hole somewhere like here, larger than the end mill that I'm going to use. And that will act as a pocket, which means I don't have to plunge cut the end mill each time I want to do a new circular cut. This is 90 millimetres across. My finished bore is going to be 74. That's going to give me a wall thickness of 8 millimetres approximately. So I've made a centre pot 15 millimetres in because I'm going to drill it through with a 9 millimetre drill and I'm going to use an 8 millimetre end mill. mount this up now on the lathe and see if this crazy idea is going to work. Well it goes together. There's a chance it might work. I guess the only risk remaining is when I start to cut it grabs or something. It's not tightened up yet by the way. It's just finger tight together. So I'll get that all clamped up and we'll give it a go. Everything's tight now and I've set up a dial gauge so I can measure the cut that I apply on the saddle. I'm hoping to make one millimetre cuts if I can. That's still 20 cuts to get through. But I'm going to start with half a millimetre. I don't have much experience with end mills and how to set the speed. But I did read that cutting in steel with a 12 millimetre end mill at a sensible feed rate with four flutes would be about 600 RPM. And the speed that you choose is proportional to the diameter of the cutter and the number of flutes. So if you've got four cutting edges, it would be, you could run that twice as fast as something with two cutting edges. Anyway, I'm gonna try 900 RPM. I'm going to feed the cut around by hand, just with my thumb on here, and just get a feel for it. There's numbers on the back of this dial, on the other side of it, degrees actually, 
and I've set it to zero against the marker so when I view it from behind I can tell when the cutter's lined up with that hole there because I can move that in look now the cutter just goes into the hole that I drilled all right let's give it a whirl and see what it does the way this works out I can cut to half the depth of this so when I get halfway I'll have to turn it round Hmm. Well, it's technically possible, but just impractical. You can see there I've managed to start cutting that circle. But it's just taking too long and it's a very cheap cutter. It's one of those eBay, you know, uh, six or eight cutters for about 12 quid. And that may be a problem because the cutter's just not cutting as well as it was when I first started. I think if that was a disc of nylon or cheese, it would be fine. So I'm going to have to machine out the middle. Um, I did say it might not work, but it was worth the experiment. You can see how metal was building up in front of the cutter there. So that was never going to work. So maybe one of you can leave a comment and suggest what I was getting wrong. I thought it should do better than that. Anyway, we'll go back to the uh, traditional way and just bore the middle out. Perhaps the N16T was just not the right material to be trying my previous experiment. Something softer might have worked. Who knows? Let me know. Leave a comment. Another chuck change so that I can bore out to full size without interfering with the chuck jaws. Just recently, I got myself some of these boring bar sleeves, which I can use to clamp the rod of my measuring tool. This is a 10 mil. I also got a 12 mil for the larger size. And it's quite useful. You can't always get the magnetic base in the place you want it. I've tried cutting at half a mil and one mil and at one mil it was birds nesting quite a lot so I'm going to take it up to one and a half mil. That might be too much. I'll go back to one mil. I'm getting a fantastic finish, it's just birds nesting. Maybe as I get to a bigger diameter it'll give up. It's hit the hole I've drilled now, so it's naturally chipping. Also I've changed the insert because it was getting a bit blunt. Axby Shed meets EN16T. I think next time I'll buy the free cutting. I only got this because it was a couple of quid cheaper. That's to size. I'll try it on the drill quill and assuming it fits then the next step is just to face the outer and the two ends. That's pretty good. This ring is slightly warm. I hope it's going to fit when it's cold. I think it'll be fine. I'm pleased with that actually in the end. Don't know if you can see the shine on that. That's three quid of ring and five quid of swarf. You can make me an offer if you want. I'm getting a lovely finish on this. I've just packed that out with spacers to bring the ring out equally all round, away from the chuck jaws so I can machine the outside. When I'm going to be working close to the chuck jaws like this, I usually set this stop. When the saddle comes up against the stop, the saddle will still keep moving and it will push the stop along the bed in that case. But if I just keep an eye on the distance between the stop and the saddle as it approaches, it just gives me a visual reference. I've cleaned up the outside now and I've chamfered here and here. I've still got to turn it around and chamfer the other side. The scale on this outer diameter was very, very hard indeed and it cost me one of my carbide tips. But I also discovered that it was a long way out of round and because I started in a three jaw, 
clamping on this outside, actually, my hole isn't perfectly central. It doesn't matter for this job, but I think for future jobs, if I had to be more precise, I'd have to be a bit more careful. The problem is, I started with such a short length. If I'd had a longer bar, I would have machined the outside first, and that would have been my datum. So as ever, I'm learning as I go along. A few lessons in that one, I think. Yeah, happy with that. A lot of work, but I'm happy. Next, I'm going to drill and tap this collar for a locking screw. I hope I don't break any taps on it. Whilst I'm waiting for the marking blue to dry on that ring, I'll just clean up those two brackets. There's a lot of spring in this ring, so it's easy just to pop it on here. There we go. I'm going to tap this 6mm by 1, and that should be a tapping drill of 5mm. But I'm going to use 13 ths because that's nearer 5.2, because I don't want it to be too tight as I'm tapping it. I'm going to start the tap off in my little model maker's drill press, which I made when I was a first year apprentice. It's just a lot more sensitive and I can get a feel for what the tap's doing. Tapping that, I managed to coax it through the 5.2 millimeter drilled hole, but only with a lot of care. That's all right, I think. I'm going to use this wheel brace for the rod that sticks down from the plate. And I'm just cutting it here, and I'm going to cut it here. Then I'm going to machine this end slightly because I'm going to drill and ream the plate, half inch, and then I'm going to press this bar in. I'm going to do that to make sure I get it square at 90 and not off at some jaunty angle, and then I'll just weld the top there in the plate. Pilot drill, then a 12.5 mil drill. Half inch reamer. I'm just chamfering off the end of these ribs to make it easier for welding. If I had a milling machine, I could do this in one cut, but it wouldn't be half as much fun, would it? That's not bad, is it? Off camera, I've bored out this ring just a fraction. It was nice and tight on the quill, but I worried that when I come to just weld it, if it distorts at all, then I'd have to put the whole thing back on the faceplate and it would be such a big chew. So this is a first. I'm going to try and video some welding. Well, that's not too bad. I like stick welding. I did some gas welding when I was an apprentice. I've had a go at MIG. I'm no good at it. I just get dribbles and sparks everywhere. I'd probably buy myself a TIG welder if I had some aluminium to do and try that. So um, a nice bit of thick plate and a plenty of current. Uh, I'm happy stick welding that. Rather predictably, it's like a banana. Got to straighten that out now. What did we do before magnetic LED lights? Try and get that about straight and check it. After quite a bit of work, that's okay. It'll only bend again when I weld the brackets on. I didn't bend the plate with that steel rule. No, that's just to compare the edge. Well, now it's flat, I tried it on the drill and that ring, that boss, has warped more than I'd allowed for and it's tight on the quill. So I'm gonna to have to machine it out, but I can do that in the chuck if, if I do it before I weld the ribs on. Because when I take the block out, this plate just clears. Woohoo! 
anti-lucky. I'm putting the bed stop on. Now look out for schoolboy error number one. <laughs> I think we'll have it a bit further along. I can't machine all the way through the bus because I would foul the jaws of the chuck. So what I've done is I've moved the top slide as far as it goes to the left and it stops before the tool hits the jaws. I've also put the bed stop on as well as a visual guide. So it should leave me just a tiny amount that I can't machine. I'm only going to take a scrape off it anyway. Both brackets are welded on now. I don't do welding that often. And by the time you get your eye into it, you've pretty much finished. Next to weld this reaction piece on. So I've put a big clamp around the drill head, lined it all up and I'll just put a spot of weld on it here and then take it off and then finish welding it. Well, that's enough for today. Nearly finished now. I turned the welding current up by 15 amps and that helped. The weld was sitting on the surface a bit, but then it was nicely burning in after I turned it up. But like I say, you don't remember these things till the end. Next day, time to machine these off. Do that on the shaper. And to do that, we need to take this vise off. I'll set it up and show you. I put locating pegs on the bottom of both of my shaper vices, and it really helps in getting it set up. There we go. Sorry, they fell on the floor, but they just go in there, look, and then they run in this slot like that. And it helps me line the whole thing up. Well, that goes on there very nicely. I wanted to say something about this. Somebody commented on the channel, they asked, doesn't the table have a front table support? Well, it does, but it's very basic. It's just this leg which you can drop down. And you'd only use it if you were taking heavy cuts. Now, this main section of the table will unbolt and rotate like that, about 45 either way. The problem is that this front table support leg is no use at all if it's sticking out here or sticking out here. So maybe a future project would be to build a front table support which swivels to support the table when it's at an angle. I'm still getting to know my shaper and I'm experimenting with different cuts and for this I've increased the cut to one millimeter but I've slowed down the feed rate and I've also slowed down the strokes. There I was doing a one millimeter cut with a two click feed so each click is about 0.1 of a millimetre or 4 thou, so that was an 8 thou feed. And actually dropping that front table leg makes quite a difference. I've never used it before. It's a lot more solid and robust. When I first got this shaper, I thought, oh, it's just a baby shaper. It's like a toy shaper. But it's surprising how much it will do. So uh, very pleased with it. Uh, I'll just finish this off now. Just to make it a nicer fit on the drill, I've taken this corner off, which I've just hacksawed off, but I'm going to use a shaper to clean it up. Now, which of you just said, I could use a file? That's missing the point. I'm just trying to learn, and it's quite exciting for me to be able to clamp something on the side of the table. So that's what it's about. I've had to put the shaper on pretty much the longest stroke and the slowest speed, but it'll work. Well, we've got this far. I suppose I better finish it off with this on the end. So I've machined the rod to a press fit. It looks about straight to me and it's straight up in the other direction too. So what we can do with it. A couple of blobs of weld on the top of that rod just to hold it securely. Do you remember where we started this? about 500 years ago. 
Well, that's just about it, I think. Oh, hold on. Yes, hello. Oh, hi. Hi, how are you doing? Yes, I'm in the shed. Yeah, I'm just finishing off a video on the tapping head, actually. I was just winding up now. Yes. Oh. How do you think so? Well, if you think so, I, I could show them it working. Well, well yes, okay. All right, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, well, thanks for the help. Bye. Hi, that was just my subscriber calling. Um, they suggested you might like to see it working. Well, okay, we'll give it a go. Just a minute while I set it up. Right, it's a 10 by 1.5 mil tap. I've drilled an 8.5 millimeter hole in a piece of aluminium, in a piece of brass, and a piece of steel. And we'll try them one after another. I've set the drill on the lowest speed, which is 175 RPM. And I've never done this before, so you'll see it as I see it. Actually, 145 RPM. So let's give it a whirl and see what happens. Right, well as you can see, you've got to keep the pressure on because otherwise the dog doesn't engage. But once you've got enough pressure on, it works perfectly. So that was the aluminium done. Let's try the brass. Okay, here goes the brass. The sides of this rectangle here are not exactly parallel, so it's really gripping at this end. So it might just jump out, but it's nothing to do with the tapping head. So once again you see you've got to keep the pressure on otherwise the dog jumps out uh, but I'm learning that's only the second I've ever done hope you can see that that's nice and clean well this is more the real test in a bit of mild steel I'm getting the hang of it now Worth £21 of anybody's money, that tapping head. Well, I hope you didn't think that was too much about the bracket and not enough about the tapping head. But I really enjoyed using all the machines. And I hope it was useful to you. Thank you for watching Haxby Shed.